All right. Well, it's day two of unit two presentations. Uh, Nandita, you want to kick it off? Yeah. Okay. So this is just a really bare bones project. I had a lot of uh, issues with it, as you can tell by my uh, <laughs> commits messages. But anyway, this is the setup that I wanted. It's gonna change a lot, as you'll see. Um, I have, I think I only have what three page. Yeah, I still have three, just three pages and stuff. But uh, layouts and stuff have changed. Um, these are the technologies I used. Uh, the basic ones that we've been using the entire time. Um, <clears throat> For pseudocode and MVP, the user can just perform basic CRUD actions. They can make a new character, update the character, view the character, and delete their character. We're gonna have to talk about updating their character later because I had a lot of issues with that one. And things I wanted to do. Uh, I wanted to have like the user like logged in stuff where you can only edit a character and delete a character if you've created it. I wanted to have a Boolean or something like a Boolean where characters will only appear on an index page if they are marked as public. So once you create a character or if you go to their show page and you start editing it, if you want them to actually appear on the public page, you have to you know, physically mark them as public. I wanted the user to be able to add their own pictures. I wanted there to be a loading screen. And this is like way late in the game. I wanted like a randomizer thing. So sort of like a random number generator uh, and maybe like an API for D and D names or whatever. So yeah. Uh, okay. Deployments. Shouldn't take that long. Hold on. Let me double check something. It might be booting up. Potentially. So this is the main page. Uh, you can see characters that have been created and that's all you can do. You have to log in to be able to uh, deal with other characters. I guess we just wait. How long does booting up take? It should be seconds. Good now, I think. Now that it's loaded. This is what mine's doing on Heroku also. Huh. If you need to switch over to your local version, that's cool. Okay. Not too stressed about it. Oh, let me do that. Okay, so you log in with Google. You get the option to add a character. And then you can do character name. So let's say Harry. And there he is. If you go here, you get the option to edit the ability scores. So this one was a really tough one. Uh, it's basically, yeah, that's it. So it doesn't take you to a new page to edit. It just edits uh, on here. Uh, and you can't edit these because it's something I'll talk about later. Uh, but yeah. And then if you want to delete Perry, delete him. Yeah, that's it. Simple code, but if I had a lot of trouble with it, so yeah. Uh, anyway, the reason I had a lot of trouble with the edit function, so I was honestly gonna do like, I had like the uh, edit page all set up for uh, editing the name, race, level, 
stuff like that. But the controller for uh, this requires us to create the ability scores uh, in the controller function itself. And it, uh, where is it? The update and the edit also require that, or rather just the update. So it sets the ability score to rec.body. And I couldn't find a way to get around that because it needs to do that for the sh uh, show edit function. But because this, uh, the edit page doesn't have a, a, an ability score thing, uh, and I'm trying to do rec.body for like everything else, that just sort of breaks everything. So yeah, that's it. What uh, what were some of your biggest hurdles in this? And your uh, your original idea for the app, like where did you go from, okay, I'm not gonna be able to do this, I'm gonna pare it down and make it look good before I go any further. Like wh what was the point where you realized you need to uh, make a change and what did you do to make that change? Uh, I think I knew from the beginning that I tried to do like too big of a scope. Like the, my project was certainly doable, but it was also a week where I had like a lot of stuff going on in real life. So it's sort of like I had to balance that and this at the same time. And around Wednesday, I started taking out like the, um, I started taking out things like the login function, the uh, public private stuff and started like get trying to get the basic requirements down and i think friday was when i hit my big hurdle for like the show page i technically had everything going but i wanted like one thing that i you know uh that was sort of like outside the scope of that so that was why i really sort of focused hard on the uh editing it on the same page as like the show page and stuff uh, I think that my biggest difficulty uh, would be sort of like around Wednesday well, during the assessment and stuff. So it was like the entire day was stressful. I was trying to like re um, relearn everything as quickly as I can because I wasn't sure like what I knew was like if what I knew was correct and stuff. So yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, what, because you have, you, your original inception of this was, you had a lot of functionality and a lot of features. And I think this is probably one of the apps I've seen so far that I think demonstrates the potential for where you can go with it. I think you have a lot of opportunity to build this out in the future. Oh yeah, it's like an open-ended um, thing. Yeah, I mean, where where do you want to take this, and do you plan on taking it there? Uh, I'll be honest, I kind of want to hook up my first project, like the spell book thing, to this. So I want to, uh, like in the future, one of my uh, features that I want to have to this is um, you can look up spells and then add them to the character. Like I want to, basically, I want to make like a fully built character creator uh, usable for D&D, and like way off in the future. I also, I was looking into um, map making stuff. So things like adding mm. icons to like basically just a grid. So characters or players can at least create things like their hometowns and stuff that'll let them feel like they're actually part of the story, things like that. Like maybe add like little background markers or whatever for the DM to figure out. Uh, I, I wanna make like a thing where only the, the DMs can see all of the characters if they're in a party um but the players can only see their character and whatever the dm has marked public or whatever you know things like that so cool i make I stuff is like sorry go ahead, go ahead. I, I was gonna say map making stuff is like a really awesome idea because like it's amazing how few tools are out there for that and how like Janky there. incredible it could be if it was built right so do that That's very cool. Um, you're going to have some more practice with this API in uh, a couple of weeks because we're going to build a DND thing with React, actually. So it's 
pretty pretty cool. It actually uses the same. It's kind of see the spells for a different character and and whatnot. Get more info on different classes and stuff like that. And it uses that D and D API. So cool. Anybody else have any questions? Yeah, um, I know that you had a lot going on on outside of this class, um, and you know, just in terms of not only studying for something else, but studying for this, how do you, and this is just for like, uh, what have you learned through this journey for everyone who's also handling multiple things at once? How do you triage or prioritize things? Just kind of want to under, like see what you learned through it and what's your methodology? Um, okay, so the way I do it is, like I set aside a certain amount of time for GA, a certain amount of time for college. And once that time is done, I, I tell myself, I cannot work on this anymore. I have to do this. And to make sure I don't burn myself out, uh, like every uh, 45 to one hour, I give myself a five minute break just to like walk around and like do something else. But I can't do GA and I can't do college during that five minute break. So it's like, you gotta partition your time out and be like pretty strict with it. That's very good. Sweet. Good job. Even though you did partition your time out, if you get exceptionally stressed out with one of those two things, how did you handle that stress? Uh, I, my method for stress is just sort of pushing it to the side and doing something else. And luckily I had enough things that were productive to do to just sort of jump onto that if things got too bad. So like I had what three classes for college. So if I was doing, I was, it was I was stressing out for one class, I would just do another class. If it was this, if I was stressing out on functionality, I'd just hop onto CSS and like back and forth. So yeah. Cool. Excellent work. Cool. Anybody else have any questions? Maybe we can get a D and D group together at some point. I've never played. Really want to though. Cool. Wait, you've never played? I'm actually shocked. Yeah, I know. You're we'll such a nerd, Ben. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nerd thing. Yeah. A D and D group would be awesome. Let's all have a round of applause for Nandita. Great way to start the day. Next up, we've got Amanda. Good morning, y'all. Can you hear me well? Yep. 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 This is my project, You Tripping. It's an app where you can browse destinations, review destinations, and book a stay. This is my Trello board and some uh, screenshots of the final. And I have a bunch of uh, ice boxes that we'll get to later. So initially, when I was uh, working on this, I had a uh, in all destinations that we would come in here, but I had some issues uh, last night, which I'll talk about later as well. Um, but I'll just get to it, you know. So once you log in, you can see all the destinations and the details. But um, the way I got around doing an admin is by creating with one account, like if you would do a post. So with this account, I can delete, but not with the other account. And then you can add destinations, add activities. And that's it. That's uh, pretty simple. Uh, some of the stuff that I wanted to do with this project was have an index page like this main view and have a popular destinations here and like uh, special offers. Uh, I didn't get to that. Uh, I have some other ice boxes. I 
wanting to show the reviews in the all destinations view instead of having it in the second uh, details, like add photos where you saw the tab up here. Uh, also have an itinerary for users. So I would have to incorporate more of a, like a user hub, among other things. So this is some of the code that I, was, that I did. You start with a model. This is the activity model, destination model, and the user model. And this is where most of the functions come in. I think perhaps the hardest thing was the uh, deleting without having some other user delete. Uh, I got around that. Uh, I got Sam's help with that. So uh, I did I did it in the create function along with this uh, this part of the model created by and then in the uh, index just add a if if statement here. But this is uh <clears throat> It did get around that, but it also like messed up the, the the original page, the main page, which I'll fix over the break, I guess. Did your um, plan change at any point during your project? Do you start off thinking you're going to do X, Y, and Z and have to make adjustments along the way? Or did you, is the final, the final, uh, thing that you've produced a good representation of what you what you wanted to make. I think start. I scaled it back for sure. I uh, I didn't manage my time as the best I could, but um, I mean I have other things going on in my life. But I think if I would have managed my time a little better, I think I could have done much more. Cool. Um, where's the coolest place you've ever traveled? Costa Rica. Liberia. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds fun. It's right by the beach, and it's also uh, like by the jungle. So it's you get both. It's pretty good. Yeah, I don't know if I could ever go to the jungle. It's like too many things that could bite me there. You tripping, Ben? <laughs> yeah. Which, what was the what was the inspiration for your uh, app name, Amando? I don't know. I just uh, <laughs> that's what came to my head. Yeah. It's, it's like you should have the lowercase i tripping with the apostrophe. <laughs> hmm. Cool. Anybody have any questions for Armando? Round of applause for Armando. Great work. Next up, we have Tyler. Okay, give me one sec, arranging my pages, and um, okay. And, can you hear me? And can you see my screen? Okay. Yep. Um, well, this is Ani app. Um, my wireframe. Um, First thoughts, I wanted to have like an animated log. Oh. So before you log in, I wanted to have um, like an animated picture as a, a front page. So you can't see any of the information while you're not logged in. Um, I need to do further functionality on the while you're not logged in part. You can't see any of the other pages. But uh, once you log in, it takes you to a home page, which I wanted to make it sort of like a lounge. Uh, so I wanted to put in a Spotify player. I originally thought I wanted to put two buttons to go to anime and manga in there. And I wanted to have a live message board, but we never had the Sakadai lecture. So I need to do that over Christmas. Um, the next is the anime collection and manga collection pages. Um, I wanted it to be simple. I, whenever I, we were doing Game Goose, I really liked how it was set up. Uh, and I, 
I always have a hard time finding good anime or good manga without having to go through and watch like an episode or two. So I wanted to be able to like preview it, see a, like a synopsis of it and maybe watch a trailer. Um, so that was uh, where I got the framing for it. And this is the details page. Um, well, you can't have animation or a video of manga because it's just paperback. So I couldn't have a video there. So split it up with a YouTube video and just post a larger, clearer poster image. Um, these are my postman pulls. It gave me a lot of data. Um, let me see. Um, my overall, it's a database of anime manga that are finished and active. It allows you to organize it. Um, I want the interactive lounge area to be a great place to chill, listen to music and interact with people in my class and talk about anime, really. Um, let's see, uh, my Trello, uh, let's see, uh, I'll get to the Trello in a second. Um, instructions, log in, enjoy the lounge, and then search. Uh, technologies used, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, well, basically the same thing up to Google Olaf as everyone else, uh, but I use the Kitsu API. Um, they call it Kitsu Apiary. I, I don't know why. Um, but YouTube and Spotify. Um, next steps, like my icebox, would be better mobile responsiveness because I didn't really get enough time to do that. Um, I want to add reviews for anime and manga uh, where they can have a favorite that it'll display like the cover image for it on their profile. I want to do the live message board, anime manga suggestions on the homepage and column form down the sides. And uh, I can't control the audio of a Spotify embed. Uh, so I need to find a better audio source. Um, and I want to have mobile playlists, uh, multiple playlists. Um, my Trello. Um, which I know it's really, really hard to see my ERD, so I pulled that up. Uh, this did change over time, uh, so I added, I have both in here, I believe, yes. Um, I had the original one, it looks really similar to Game Goose. I thought it was gonna be more similar than it was. Uh, didn't really look at my Postman 2 too, too much until I actually got into it, which ended up becoming this, so. Uh, here is my app. Let me start. Why is this not wanting to? Okay, there we go. Restart server. Yeah. So log in. It takes you to the page. Um, I'm not clicking this because it will blow everybody's eardrums. Um, I want to, I, I wrote message board in because I want to add that in later. Um, let me see, here's your add anime page. Uh, let me see, details, move from collection. If you don't have one in your collection, it shows this little GIF or GIF. Um, Search functionality, does anybody have an anime that they want to search? You know what I want to search. <laughs> Samurai Champloo. Oh, this video is unavailable. Oh, let's see. Why are some of these unavailable? I actually did not run into that yesterday. So thank you for that. Um, like Sword Art has a YouTube player that will show a trailer for it. Um, I added in the ability to go full screen on it. Um, Let's see. That was actually a lot of fun for me was figuring out how to, out how to work iframes during the project. That was actually extremely informative. Um, 
and also styling within the tags. Like when you throw up an image and in the image tag, you can style it, uh, which I found really, really easy. Um, let me see. Mongo does the same thing. Um, I know Anna loves JoJo, so I, I did this. Um, search for that. We'll go Dragon Ball. And details. Um, you can add them to your collection. Oh, I actually threw an error. There you go. Um, let me see. So, um, let me see. Oh, that's actually going to lead me into my next thing. Um, you can. I did a custom error page. So um, that was another fun thing that I enjoyed. Put two S's in users. Yeah, that's it's a four four error. He tried to do that on purpose to break yeah. the error. I like the Isaurus, by the way. That was cute. <laughs> um, that would be uh, readyartwork.com. They have some really, really cool um, error four fours, and they're really, really cool. Uh, I, I had a hard time choosing a good one. Um, and that about covers my app other than my friends, user list, and logout works. That would be it for my app right now. I plan to do a lot of rework during Christmas and uh, I'd, I'll probably post it up later around New Year's. Cool. Let's see some code. Um, what part of the code would you like to see? Um, just tell us about your favorite chunks, parts you had difficulty with. Um, oh, uh, parts I had difficulty with. Uh, I wrote this down. Uh, I could. Uh, I had a hard time accessing my uh, API, I, as the teachers may know. Um, but in my let me see, show functions, I forgot to do attributes a lot of the time, even when accessing data, because it it just kind of seemed a bit redundant and uh, I would forget about it in the spree of dots that I had to put over and over again. So that was my biggest problem was remembering to put attributes all the time and I passed dot ID instead of dot underscore ID or, uh, and it broke my remove to um, remove and add to collection button. So. That'd be about it. Cool. What were, uh, did you have any uh, changes that you made along the way? Like, did you think I'm going to have this, this, this in my app? And um, the socket.io for the live chat. So I haven't put that in, but I thought I could, I would search them as one. Uh, so, like in my initial ERD, it just said anime because I was going to just anime and manga but whenever i got in there this uh they did it by animated them manga and it made it harder to grab them because some of them had matching names and stuff like that is how it was originally going by so i split it into anime and manga and did it by slug instead of doing it by name and that that's about it that i changed and and the variables that I, or the key value pairs, that's, I added more. Cool. What was the most entertaining part of this project for you? What did you enjoy the most when you were working on it? I frame and uh, I used the, 
the game lecture as like um, a point, a, a step by step for myself to build mine as it was so similar. So I got to the, uh, what was it? The point where you make an anime show. show. Well, where is it? The YouTube player. Okay. So the iframe YouTube player, it was different on Game Goose. It had it as like type MP4 um, video. And when I tried to do that for the YouTube player, nothing worked, no matter, even if I had the right address in there and stuff like that. So I spent about, I think it was Tuesday from like five to like 1030 reading just on iframe docs. And I learned a lot about them and um, they're really, really interesting. So that that's the most fun I had. And then helping Brady and Julio with some functions was so much fun. Cool. Anyone uh, have any questions for Tyler? How much anime did you watch while building this app? Uh, I've seen two seasons of SAO. Wow. So that's uh, 43 episodes. Wait, how many seasons does SAO have anymore? Four. They wow. have, uh, really? They have SAO, then they, uh, which is the original one. And they have Gun Gale, which is eh, but it has a great spinoff series. Uh, one of my favorite animes is the spinoffs. And then season three and four are Alicization and War of the Underworld, which is part of Alicization. Huh. Which I'm just starting on that. Uh, and plan to finish that in Neon Genesis over, uh, over Christmas. Interesting. And my second monitor just gave out. You don't want to watch a Neon Genesis on Christmas? I don't. You do. You want to end it on Christmas. I, I didn't understand. Was that a do or don't? Do not. Do not? Okay, now I'm <laughs> curious why. That's what I'm interested about now. Yeah, why? Oh, you know, I just watch it. You you realize that <laughs> you realize why I am, I am warning you. I'm looking forward to that. Thank you. I, I just want you to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> just message it to me. Don't don't spoil it for Tyler. You just message it to me. I, I you you can spoil it. Anybody else questions for Tyler? That aren't going to spoil things. Round of applause for Kyle. Good work. Okay. Uh, and I just posted that socket IO lecture. Uh, if y'all are interested in that over the break or any time in the future, I would go bookmark that. Um, keep in mind that we will be updating that over time. Um, there are some stretch goals that we've got on there. Uh, not sure when we'll get to that because we've got a bunch of other stuff we need to take care of for learning materials, but um, there's really cool stuff in there. So I highly recommend you go check it out. Next up, we've got Malik. So I did, uh, can you guys hear me? Yep. yep. So I did a project similar to Tyler. Mine is just anime though. And a little backstory is uh, one of my friends is a developer and she wanted to keep track of the anime she watched. So all the functionality I made or I have, I made with my friend of mine. So let's see here. I guess we're starting my ERD. So we just have a user and uh, this changed a little bit. Our uh, recommendations kind of just became the watch list and I didn't do reviews, but I did favorites. So it was just a simple um, app where you, um, where you search for anime, you can add it to your favorites or you can add it to a watch list. And I use the same technology as everybody else did. 
some stretch goals I have is to make my code more dry because my I have monoliths and it gets crazy in some places. Um, I want to add like a messaging board type thing on the anime details pages. I want to make my own custom 404 page because I didn't get to do that. I want to add messages, friends, and um, a custom font. And to the website itself. And then here's the landing page. I have a, a little slideshow. These are A tags that I could link to the specific anime. I just haven't gotten to that yet. I was just trying to work on other stuff. And then when you log in, okay. So my main page is just this anime index page. Uh, one of the biggest headaches I've had is I was trying to include the index and the search in the same page and add pagination to it and it was giving me a headache and then last night i figured out how to use red queries and it's so the search doesn't work right now because it was working before like i was kind of using like a brute force method so i'm kind of working my way like up there and show you that you're on the second page and stuff like that so I'm thinking about adding another a search query on top of this if I want to search for a specific enemy. So besides that, you can click on this arc the lad. I don't know what that is. It shows you a little synopsis. This I have a lot of dead like a tags all over the place of stuff that I want to get to. So this one I want to take it to like a message board of the anime where you can like have discussions and arguments and stuff like that if you want. This this button right here, you can click on it. Oh. Hmm. I've never seen that's, that before. That's cool. Just switch over to your local version. All right. All right. Is that front list random? Hmm? Is your front uh, carousel, is that, is that called a carousel on the front one? Is it random? Yeah, that was courtesy of Miranda yesterday. I just added that. Okay. Yeah. So, um, um, oh, okay. Well, um, what's the problem? I don't know what's happening, but you know, that's fine. Oh, well, now it's telling me it's no. I actually have no idea what's happening, but uh, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Just it's a it looks like a small bug that you can work out at some point this afternoon um if you want to show us your code oh. you can do that all right um okay so i have a pretty gnarly code i think it, my like controller functions get pretty long my ejs uh one thing i learned two things about myself doing this project is that EJS is kind of a nightmare and I need to like I feel like at this stage I'm a better front-end developer than back-end I really feel like over the break I need to practice uh, with my back-end stuff because I feel like I solved a lot of my problems but I did it in like a more complicated way than it should have been but some pretty cool things that I did here maybe like in the index, I wanted everything to be separated by rows. And I didn't know if you can do this, but in the EJS, I like made a display function. And I just called that display function four times so my anime could be separated into rows because before that it was just catching everything at once and putting it into like this one really long uh, card, which I didn't want. So um, little stuff like that. 
Did you uh, make, did you make any changes to things along the way? Like, did you want to have more fu more functionality or more features at the beginning that you took something away, or did you? Because I know you said you yeah. added that carousel. Like, what else? What else did you do to? Yeah, I definitely had like a lot of features at the beginning, and then I realized, you know, towards the end, let me just focus on probably like MVP stuff. And so like messaging and stuff like that, I wanted to include in friends, but I didn't get a chance to get there. And the, the carousel just came about because I just wanted to have a simple way of, you know, I just didn't want my, um, my landing page to just be one, like one big blank page. So I just try to find something to put on there. Um, another thing I really like is that, well, my main goal going into it is I wanted to make sure the styling is good and I feel like this is the first thing I've built where it's like fully, it's fully uh, responsive and it looks good on like any report. That's one thing I'm proud of and yeah, that's about it. What's your favorite oh. anime? It's a tough one. Uh, I would say, oh no, definitely Hunter x Hunter. It's probably like my number one favorite when I could rewatch. It's a really cool adventure show. What do you think about Trigon? Be careful how you answer this. It may pray, depends on it. Uh, I might age myself here, but I, I don't think I've ever seen Trigon. A little bit before my time. I've never watched any of the classic ones like Trigon and stuff like that. I've never really watched. Wait, you've seen Cowboy, right? Yeah, Cowboy Bebop. I haven't watched it. Nope. <gasps> Samurai Champloo? Fail homework. him, Shizad. Fail him. <laughs> I've seen Samurai Champloo, yeah. Okay, give him a seat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions for Malik? Excellent work. That's awesome. Um, I just wanted to make a quick note in, uh, and because we have a few more presentations. Your presentation, like Ben had, I think, yesterday or the, the day before, or no, yesterday, that something will break. I'll, like, you won't know at some path, some crap will happen and it'll break. In those moments, um, this is our classroom and we're safe space and we can say whatever we want. You might be at an interview presenting a take home app that they ask you to build. You might be at a, an actual your job and you had to present to your marketing team like, hey, this is what we got so far. When things break, um, don't like make it work in, not make it work like fix the error there, but rather get your presentation up. Uh, Find a way to not say, oh my God, I have no idea what's happening or freak out. Not that you did Malik, but you want to find a rhythm in there to sort of change the, uh, the, the pace because people are going to expect something like, oh my God, it broke. And you need to find a smooth way to talk about those. Um, or if you've got a bug and you know it's bug, like find a way to humor it. It's like, oh no, that's actually a feature that I've been working on and blah, blah, blah. And then I'll definitely change it. So find those sort of pivots uh, that make your presentation overall um, like a pleasant experience. And everyone knows that code always breaks. So you should embrace that. And just like, it's a, it's almost like funny thing that, oh my God, it broke again. Like you should always find the humor in it, uh, especially when you're working or on an interview, especially that's the last thing you want to do to yourself on a long interview is to freak out in that sense. And then, cause you, it's hard to climb out when you're live in front of somebody interviewing you whenever you fall down that path. Uh, so whenever that happens, we're like, oops, can we just take a quick three minute break? I'm gonna unshare my screen, figure out what's really happening um, or take a water break, whatever. If you need to stop, think and be like, okay, well, here's what's going on. Here's where I'm at. So always keep those things in mind. Very cool. Uh, we gave Malik a round of applause, right? But whatever, look, do it. Excellent work. Do it again. Cool. Uh, all right, Julio, y'all set? Yep. Okay. So I built this app called Pokey Collector. Uh, it's basically an uh, app where you can build up your team and share it with friends. Uh, I built this just because of how much I've watched it when I was a child and played the games and everything. So I thought this would have been pretty cool. 
Uh, this is the wireframe images that I've built. It's turned out uh, pretty similar to what I had. Uh, and then mobile, I got, I got everything responsive on mobile as well, which I was pretty proud of. Uh, and so this would be my Trello board here, um, the ERD, and then just the description of it. Um, yeah, the technologies used was just pretty much the same as everyone else. Uh, and have the a lot of my ice boxes finished. I took a lot of time yesterday and the day before to finish that, like the uh, catching an error mis one uh, misspelling a Pokemon name and capping the Pokemon team on six. Only thing I haven't re got to is reviewing the trainer's Pokemon. I was I was gonna write a schema for it, but I realized I was running into a lot of issues with that, so I just decided to scratch that for right now. And so yeah. So this is where you get prompted as a login screen. You log in with Google. Um, this is the, it directs you to the Pokedex page. Uh, this is where anyone can just search up Pokemon to add to the team. Does anyone have a suggestion for a Pokemon to add? Arcanine. Sure. Okay, so here's Arcanine and it has their uh, type, abilities, height, weight, and then their stats. It also shows you a shiny form of how they look like. You can just add them here and then check your Pokemon page on, on like, and then over here, if you go back to the Pokedex, you want to remove him and remove the Pokemon from your team. And then they'll prompt you with a little message saying you have no more Pokemon in your team. Uh, here's where you can add friends, check out their Pokemon team. Uh, and then also their information underneath my profile you can update your profile uh, just type in anything update it and then you get your bio uh, trainer list check you can uh, see uh, people that signed in and uh, that's about it that's the app so now let me take you guys to the actual code uh, the coding for here would be my controllers for the Pokemon and then for my users. Uh, a lot of these were kind of uh, very fun to uh, make. Let me show you the model. The model was really simple. And then the users was also, I had the team schema to actually be able to uh, assign a user for uh, with a team and then add Pokemon to it. Uh, my one of my favorite features would be the random Pokemon call, which I got to work uh, by reading the docs, and also Tyler and Nicholas helped me with that. Um, also, the capping your Pokemon was just uh, an F and L statement that Sam helped me with. Uh, and yeah, there's also one more thing. So I, I managed to add a uh, sound effect into it for to every like tab that you in that you navigate to and that's over here and i guess the my like my key takeaway would be just like managing to be able to like really plan out my my code with the routes and everything because after i got that done with the with my pseudo code that i have in my trello um everything went a lot smoother than I expected, uh, for the most part, at least. And so yeah, that's basically it. Cool. Um, I like the sounds a lot. I think that adds quite a bit. Like this is yeah. a very good example of like how adding just a simple little plink sound can like really change an app. And I think you, you did a great job with that. Yeah, originally I, it was like, it had the delay on the MP3 or yeah, the MP3 file. So I had to shorten that. And yeah, that was, uh, I was getting confused on why that wasn't working. It was like delaying. So every time I would press a button, it would like take some time to, until the other uh, button was clicked. But I got that to full work. Cool. Do you plan on building this out? Um, uh, yeah, like I said, a review, a review, like right after like someone, uh, whenever like someone adds a Pokemon, having a little review section here, give it a rating and like a comment and then having their profile show up would be pretty cool. That's what I was going to build. Uh, I mean, uh, during the process of this, but I didn't, uh, I was running into too many issues to prioritize a lot of the time for that. So I'm definitely going to be working on that during the break. 
and a live chat uh, would be cool. That would be pretty cool. Uh, definitely gonna look check out the source that you sent, and probably implement that. Socket.io. You could actually have Pokemon battles. You could fight Pokemon. That's sick. That would be cool. That would be definitely cool to add in here. Yeah. So that's that'd be dope. Of the uh, Pikachu. Who is that Pokemon app, or is it your cousin? Sorry, what was that? Doesn't your cousin or your brother have the Who's That Pokemon app? Oh yeah, my my brother-in-law has this. Uh, he's also went to GA, but he built like a Who's That Pokemon uh, for his unit one project, and I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, that the socket that I L feature where you can battle uh, Pokemon. I, that's definitely something I'd have to look into. It would be a whole lot of work, but man, that would be. Yeah, I, I I'm looking at like thinking about it. And it's like it definitely looks like a lot of work. Yeah. Cool. Anybody else have any questions for Julio? A round of applause for Julio. Yep, good job. Thanks, guys. All right. We are going to take a quick 10 minute break and we'll come back and have a couple more people present before lunch. All righty. Amber. Ready to do this? Where's Amber? No Amber. Okay. Well, Brady, you're up. Oh, that's sad. Okay. <laughs> Share my screen. Okay, so I made, the app I made is called I Love That Song, and the blurb um, is the app helping music journalists organize the music they need for research. Um, let me open it up. Um, here's the homepage. Um, so pretty much the, the reasoning for this app is like, I'm a music journalist, and whenever I'm researching for pieces, I have to look at like 20 different websites to find information, kind of like a Wikipedia on Spotify, on YouTube, um, frantically Googling. And there was kind of this frustration of like wasting time looking for all these details. So using the Discogs API, and Discogs is kind of like a glorified Wikipedia uh, for music specifically, information on albums, kind of turning that into like a game goose-ified version of Discogs um, really meant to kind of keep track of like all the pe all the albums you want to write about and learn about. Um, pull up my trail board. Uh, That's great use of your footer for attributions. Oh, thank you. Um, so I have like a lot of Icebox stuff. Um, one thing I'll say about like the wireframe, what really, what I'm going to continue going forward for planning is that in the wireframes, I actually wrote out the routes I wanted to do and kind of organize like, okay, here are the albums, here's the new page, here's the profile for users. And just like visualizing that helped out a lot. Um, I definitely struggled in this unit. So this was really me getting a huge rep in to redo Game Goose, I think, but like still writing out like this helped kind of drive the ideas home. Um, my ERD, the original one, um, a huge frustration that I encountered in the project is that this changed drastically. I almost was tempted to just like throw it out and just like restart. Um, I'll share my model in a sec, but it definitely, I was very stubborn to commit to this ERD, but then I finally realized it's better just to like admit that I need to change course. And once I just embraced that and kind of focus on the data I needed, that helped a lot. Uh, so the app, you log in. Yeah, you have the header, you got the footer. Um, log with Google. Cool. So then like, once you sign in, you can actually have options to find an album, you have your album collection uh, profile, um, ask a question, kind of like a message board, and an option to log out again. Um, and I actually intentionally made this to take out social media function. I like include that at first. Um, I'll share the message board in a sec, but this really is just like for you with no like distractions from Twitter, 
or anything, just to focus on research. So if I type in like the Rolling Stones, it comes up with every most um, official releases by the Rolling Stones. Um, and the current search request searches mostly by title. So like an icebox is to make a more flexible search by like artists. But if I do a specific album name, like Lead Lead, click on more info, and then it gives you pretty much every information that Discogs has on the album. Um, so it tells you like John official genre style. Um, some albums have like liner notes about like where it was recorded, like why it was made, the context, how many Grammys it won. Um, but I did a lot of like if statements kind of saying if none apply, just like return something. Um, and then it returns like every musician who plays every single instrument on each song, which is really helpful. Um, and I'll share this function in a sec, but um, Tyler and Anna were a huge help for making this work, where it automatically spits out um, a YouTube video of every track list on the album. So you don't have to like go to Spotify to like listen to the album. You can just listen to it in this app too, which is really great. Um, don't need to pay monthly Spotify dues. Just have this app. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of, a, kind of a way. If you don't have a Spotify or you don't have Apple Music, this is still a way you can listen to music instead of like frantically searching for stuff. Um, album collection, and then you can add and remove an album. Um, I didn't have as much time making like this look nice, but this kind of like points out all the albums you saved. And what I'm really proud about the app is like for Willie Nelson and Stardust, um, the API doesn't have musician information, but it has songwriting information. So you can kind of say like, oh, here's who wrote all the songs, which is really cool. And then if you listen to them, whereas like Dua Lipa, it has all production credits. So you can see like who actually mixed, produced, sometimes who co-wrote all the songs on her album. And then you can like listen to and everything from there. Um, so it's really flexible, which I'm really happy about. Um, when you go to your profile, this is very bare bones. I want to add more to it. But I turned this from like a bio thing into like a to-dos. So like I can kind of write saying like, oh, like I have to write about David Bowie's anniversary coming up like next month. I need to listen to Black Star. So it's kind of like also keeping track of like your writing deadlines and everything. So you know you gotta listen to like these five albums coming up. Um, you can ask a question, and this is kind of like the message board. Again, I didn't have time to really style this well, but this would be kind of like if you're asking other writers, hey, I'm doing a piece on like the Grammys, like what Grammy albums should I check out? You can write a post and you can see posts and you can reply. And you can also delete your own specific message. So there's all like full crud being able to delete stuff. Um, I think like one thing I'll note too is um, the API, I ran into a weird bug of like when you search, the search API function includes album art, which is really cool. And, and that's what I really liked. But to actually see the details on an album, it takes away the album art in a different search. And that's like an icebox is to flesh out the, um, my promises in my controllers because I really want to include like, the album art here. Um, so that's like one thing I really want to include. Um, then back to the homepage, you can log out. Um, yeah, so here's the code. Um, <laughs> my models, uh, one thing I really learned about this unit too, I focus so much on troubleshooting in my like controllers and routes for like fixing bugs. I think I was talking to like Nick one day and he's like, can you check your models? I'm like, oh, I forgot to like update my models. So I just like really like the power of a good model helps so much. Like this is all the information 
that the API has and being flexible that some albums have this, some don't have that and all that, um, which is really cool. Uh, my favorite EGS, um, this is what I was referring to for Ann and Tyler. Um, what, if it has a uh, video, video links, um, using slice and like pulling, like the API returns the last 11 letters of like the video's YouTube ID. So just like getting creative of like slicing that away, adding that into a YouTube embed, putting it in an iframe, and that allows you to pump back a video no matter what it is. And if there's no videos associated with the artists, there's no like error. Um, also a big learning, <laughs> a learning experience. Um, I originally wrote this if statement to be like 40 lines long and I was pulling my hair out because I couldn't get it. I was like over publicating it. And then like it dawned on me just to just do the, this one line of code. Um, like if like this key value is in it and it is fixed everything. Um, so being able to like reduce a function from like 40 lines to one line is pretty great feeling. Um, yeah, so my controllers, um, and this is like my ice box. I want to like do more promises with the different get requests, but that's like down the road. Um, but yeah, kind of a, I think overall to, I like, because I was copying from Game Goose, or like to go along with it, I tried to like build something complicated and then simplify. I think going forward, I want to really take the time to just build something very simple first, where I really understand the logic and then grow it out from there. Because I found that like, I had like a to listen collection and I realized I didn't need it. So I had to like figure out how to like cut that and still save the website. That took a lot of unnecessary time. So just really trusting that like asking for help and figuring it out. Um, like it's okay to like start really simple at first. Um, yeah, that's uh, I love that song. Cool. I like the I love uh, your styling. Mm -hmm. Is there a link at the bottom for getting to know your local representatives? Oh yeah, I, I do this with all my projects, just like based on your location, just kind of saying like, who's your congressperson, who are your reps, kind of thing. It's awesome. That's actually good. You go listen to a song and then go look at who your reps are. Uh, um, I, I'm, I'm always having this issue where uh, I have like 70 albums that I need to listen to and I'll like put them in a playlist or I create a playlist and I'll figure out. But having a, a to-do list would help me uh, maybe put a timer on it. It's like this Friday I'm going to listen to this album or something. So I like that idea on yours. I also like, um, I don't, I like the way your logo looks, but I don't understand. What do you do? You drink coffee or you um, listen to the record? Oh, that's just like a really fun one I found on like Giphy.com. They have a really, it's in my um, GitHub, I believe, but I just, it's a very calming GIF to me. And it's very like music, but it's also this idea of like, you know, like you have your coffee, you're gonna do your research. You're gonna like hunker down. And the idea is like, you would have this app on the background while you also write your piece, while you do other research. But like, just to know that you can just have this in the background, it's kind of like your coffee in a sense. Um, I just like the way it looks too. That yeah. moves. It really fits your style too. Like the, the music notes and the font of the title like are very similar. Like it, it's kind of wild how like it fits. I love, I love your styling. It's fantastic. And I'm so happy that you have a video now. Oh my God, it's amazing. I, I want to study that function that you did. It definitely like saved, cause I think I was again, like pulling my hair out thinking like, I can't do this function. This is impossible. Like Google wasn't helping, but just like remembering, oh, just like do a simple if statement <laughs> and then like, just, and that's all you need. It's it was, it was pretty funny realizing that. Very cool. Anybody else have any questions for Brady? 
No, I, I great work, round of applause. I love it. Oh, it looks oh. amazing. There we can still round of applause. Nice work. Uh, Amber, you want to do it to it? Uh, up. Okay, so I did mine on Kingdom Hearts and it's an Instagram or as close as I could get it. Uh, so this is my Trello board. Um, so basically, my a lot of stuff that I wanted to get done, I didn't, but finally it still works and does things. So I got authenticating working. I wanted users to be able to follow and unfollow, which honestly, it's really icebox because getting basic functionality was, yeah. But um, I wanted users to be able to update their profile and be visible to other users and um, update with live posting slash feed, which that's what I mainly needed and got. Um, want your profile to show your name, follower amount, following in like post history previews. Um, I wanted the like and unlike feature and like op eventually optimize it for mobile and for it to of course be Kingdom Hearts themed. Um, so then, Basically saying the same thing here. Um, basically, I want people to eventually be able to like uh, comment on other people's posts, etc. I mean, it's mostly just a glorified posting app like Instagram. Um, some of the technologies I use was Google Auth, so basically Mongo, Method Override, .emv. Um, I want to add. A, there's a lot I want to add honestly but basically just making it closer and closer to instagram so dm function edit your profile and edit your display name because and um menu sounds i ended up getting one menu sound in but it's it's like very if you click it like very slow and works occasionally so i have to like mess with it to make it where it instantly does it when i click it um, my main sources, uh, my, my friend, Google, YouTube, and like referencing like Kingdom Hearts 3. Um, so then my, my deploy is like being buggy right now because I guess I, it's, I just like redeployed it, but um, look out. So this is just one of my other accounts, and just the user list. And I need to switch to my other account. There's no, there's no difference between them. I didn't like create anything special, but just so you, so you can see that you can log in and out. So like this is the display feed. So I got open. Um, so. So yeah, plays that sound when you like it. Um, and then there's my caption and the like went up. You can also post GIFs. And then I'm not gonna delete share at the I love them. The delete a function. And then um, I could create a post here. So, love him. And then uh, I couldn't figure out how to like grab it from your local machine. So I have to like, you just have to post in like, um, like a grab it from image location, so then copy. So yeah, so you can post image location or GIF locations and yeah. 
Okay. So, um, yeah. And this is my code. So, a lot of stuff is like that I didn't finish is still in here, like um, my comments feature, because I. I don't really have a, a function or EJS that I'm most proud of because honestly, like making it through this project because Node was not like easy for me at all. But um, I like, so like I have some of like my comment feature stubbed up because it was the last thing I was trying to work on. But uh, yeah, I definitely say with this project, even though I attempted to like accommodate for the fact that like last time, last project, I wasn't um, as prepared as I wanted to be because I still ended up like sitting at my computer and like feeling like really disorganized. <laughs> I um, I still kind of ended up being like that, so because I I felt like I was just kind of working on random pages, and then like. I, a lot of it was in, um, it wasn't working. So I had to, I had to just start from the ground up and just be like, okay, let me just set up all of my pathways and like get something rendered. So I went like super basic and just like put like a header and got that rendered. And, um, yeah, so I, I mean, I guess if I had to pick, I would say that my, the, Part that I'm most proud of is probably getting kind of like the the one noise in and getting my um what was it uh kind of getting my like feature to work because right now it just kind of goes up but you can't unlike something but yeah so cool I like that you've stuck with uh, Kingdom Hearts for themes for your your apps. Um, hopefully, when you get into a group project, you can talk your group teammates <laughs> into continuing that and making something with that as well. Um, more importantly, for the Unit 3 project, what do you think, what strategies, because you said that you had some issues with this organization. Um, what do you think that you can do next time to better prepare yourself and come up with a plan that you'll actually stick to? Yeah. Uh, I think it was just like, I kind of got it towards the end as far as like organization was just um, like, I, I, before you had, I know you'd warned us, but I had already done it was like, oh, try not to stub up a bunch of functions and like to constantly just like refer back. So I was like, oh yeah. So I got to this point where I was just like, there's a lot of stuff on my screen and not of any of it is like actually visible. So I'm just like, now I, I just work on stuff that I can constantly be visible of. Cause like a lot of the errors that I get, I also don't know how to, and like, I'm like, I'm not even sure what's happening because half the time I don't get an error. So I'm like, so I feel like that would be avoided if I just like took it like one page at a time and just like made sure like things were rendering instead of just having a bunch of like repurposed code that's probably not even doing anything in there. So yeah, I also, I think also I'll, huh? Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say it's also go like ahead. my problem. Problem is is that like I I picked a I picked a uh, project I was too passionate about. So like I really wanted to get it to to look a certain way. So I got I get I tend to get caught up in like one area a lot. <laughs> yeah, what do you say? I think a couple people did that same thing and they, you know, they tried to are like, I'm just gonna write all my routes and all my controller functions and then I'll go and debug stuff. And I think everyone that did that learned that same lesson that, you know, when you do that, it's very difficult to debug because when you have something break, it could be broken in six different places and you don't know because you, just, you don't know where the issue is. And I think that's a, a great thing to point out is that, you know, in the future, the way that you should be writing code is, you know, small testable chunks. Um, it's also when you should be committing 
Um, you know, some of you on your projects didn't have as many commit messages. Um, and you just, every time you implement some sort of small functionality, you want to do it bit by bit, piece by piece and, and go from there. So yeah, I think if you take that approach on your next project, you'll find that you'll be a lot more productive. Um, I mean, your app is great. It works. It's, you know, it's something you should be proud of. So don't get yourself down about it. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, it's good to recognize that, you know, you, everyone has a place that they've recognized that they, you know, the things they're going to take to the next, the next project. And it's good to be able to identify that and focus in on it so that when you get there, you're good to go. So mm -hmm. great work. It, it also, Does anybody have I, any questions? Uh, go ahead. I was going to say it also helped because uh, I, Erica was helping me yesterday and then she like straight up bullied me into using the support chat. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I'm very bad at asking for help. So, she, um, yeah, <laughs> that was that was. Who's good. had a so, bad experience? Show of hands <laughs> on the support channel. <laughs> Enough said, right? Yeah. Cool. Anybody have any questions for Amber? All right, round of applause for Amber. Great work. Thank you. Next up, we have Lulu. Okay. All right, me too. Okay. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> my inspiration is obviously um, about aviation. Um, the end game for this whole thing is actually that I would like to build this website out to complete functionality and everything that we'd want for our mine and my dad's flight school and slash avionics shop. So um, right out the door, I was completely making this project way bigger than it a needed to be <laughs> like many people. Um, and mostly because it's something that, you know, I, I was thinking about the, the big picture about how I wanted it to be in the end. Um, and so I started out with, um, these are just some screenshots and, um, of what it looks like. <clears throat> Not that beautiful. Um, so originally, oops, I think it was here. Um, this is still something that I want to achieve, but I did get rid of um, some models just because it was excessive. There was a lot of referencing back and forth, and that's mostly because of the way that I wanted the routes to be set up. And I wanted there to be links on every page and you were, you were able to, you know, select certain things. Um, uh, for example, in the scheduled flights, originally I was embedded, I was referencing the uh the flight schema i was refer i mean the aircraft schema i was referencing the users i wanted there to be an instructor model a student model all these different things for um more so for authorization like login purposes um but it was getting really really messy so i had to definitely let go of a lot of things that i still want to add to it um but I'm just not there yet in terms of my proficiency in, in coding, which is totally okay. I, d I need to get more reps in when it comes to routing and controllers and all of that kind of stuff. And um, I had to give myself a little bit of grace and say, hey, like you're not a senior developer right now and that's okay. You know, basic is okay for where I'm at. So I had to let it go, let go because I definitely knew that I was capable of doing all of this, but when I actually got into um, working all of this out, it, it became very messy um, really quickly. So letting go <laughs> was the biggest thing for me. Um, this is kind of what I wanted the homepage to look like, or it is what I wanted it to look like. It doesn't look like that at all. Um, all of these were going to be uh, this was kind of like a carousel again, like these are all instructors, pictures of the instructors that you should be able to click on. Um, and also I wanted to embed my first, my unit one project in the bottom here, um, which I didn't use this, uh, wireframe at all. It doesn't look anything like this, but it, 
it will. I want it to still. So, um, again, like I said, some of my biggest challenges were just letting go of functions, functionality of, of my app that I wanted um, and simplifying it and completely changing uh, how I, how, you know, just completely changing the, the scope of some of the functions and, you know, limitations for certain users and things like that. Um, that was kind of frustrating for me because I just, I wanted it to work, but just, you know, A, with my life and uh, the amount of time that I had, it's just, it wasn't even uh, realistic or practical. So um, I just had to let go and make sure that I was just getting the basics done and, and just really demonstrating that I understood what I was doing. Um, and also styling for me. I mean, I, I, I hate styling. It's not fun at all. So that was challenging to me just because I put it off and I just, I don't want to do it. Um, and then it became when I would run into errors, it became difficult to style because I couldn't even see it because I was, you know, my server was crashing and it was just, it would get really frustrating um, because you can't really style without going back and forth between your deployed app or your local host and like kind of seeing what you're doing. Um, but when all your functions are crashing and your server, you know, aren't working or your server's crashing, you can't style it and you just don't. For me, I don't really care what it looks like um, that much. I just care about the data and I care about um, the functionality of it. Uh, I have a lot of Icebox features and that is because this is something real that I want to use um, for our school. So, I mean, the list is infinite. My main Icebox features are going to be the um, the authorization. So logging in and selecting whether you know, you're a student or an instructor, that will change things, which um, I've seen a lot of other projects do. I just didn't get around to doing that. So I'm sure that's pretty simple. Also accessibility, um, in terms of, uh, legal issues, there's this guy here in Colorado that's going around and suing all these small businesses because their websites aren't accessible for people that ha are hard of seeing, hard of hearing and those kinds of things. So, um, and it's a thing. So I just really wanted to, um, make my website very accessible. I don't know that there's very many aviators that um, are going to have vision problems, but still, <laughs> I mean, you never know. People are people. So anyway, um, so this is just my Trello board, which is um, somewhere. I don't know where it went. I don't know where it went. Somewhere. Um, Trello board. And then this is my website. Um, this is our actual logo. Um, I'm wearing it on my t-shirt right now too. Anyway, these are, this is just kind of our color scheme. Um, so you can log in. Um, it takes you to this main page. Again, um, the main page that I showed you on my wireframe is really realistically how I'd like it to look, but um, I didn't focus too much on that. Um, you can log back out. All right, so um, we'll just start from over here. Um, you can come in here. Uh, this is anybody at this point can create an aircraft um, and and edit the aircraft and delete the aircraft um, that you add to the fleet. However, um, when I change things, the only people that will be able to do this are the admin, um, just because it it wouldn't make sense for students to be able to go and plug in aircrafts, but for the sake of this project, you can do this and you can update it um, and change things here. This also, uh, so this pushes it into, uh, and not an array, it pushes it into um, something that we'll call later. So this is a referenced uh, model right here, this whole aircraft model that gets referenced in scheduled flights. So when you come in here, um, you can um, you can create a new schedule. So you select the date, um, time, yada yada. Your instructor, um, and you can add to the schedule. And then I don't know why that's not working. Um, oh, I do know why that's not working. It's very strange, actually. So this has been an issue. Um, this has been an issue that I've had for quite some time. <laughs> we worked on it um and i can show you why it doesn't work and 
how to make it work, which is very strange. Um, I still haven't figured out. It was working earlier, so that's weird um, that it's not working right now because I haven't changed anything. However, um, I know exactly where it's at. This, um, give me a second. Um, so it's saying cannot read property name of undefined. It's referring to this part right here. However, this is very strange um, why it does this. I can't figure out. Um, I was able to um, edit it so that it doesn't do that. Um, but so it's saying cannot read property name of undefined, but if I actually go into, um, I believe it's, if you're changing code on your machine, you'd have to push it to Heroku before yeah, you're on Heroku. you saw any actual oh, changes. Oh, oh, okay. Is this the... There you go. This is it. Okay. Oh, yeah. This picture is super special. <laughs> I love how... I mean, the design is just phenomenal. Um, um, so it's weird because right now, if I were to push it in here, it's going to just show up as the ID, right? So that's all good and fine. But when I plug this back in, um, oops, not there. Uh, when I plug it back in and just refresh it, um, of course it fixes it. However, the link somehow is when I put this in here, it's saying cannot read property name of undefined, even though it can. So I went back and forth with how to fix that um, and never really got to a solution. Um, it's very strange that it works specifically on this page, but something with the route is is wrong. So I have to go and debug that. Um, however, this is the list down list here um, of different aircrafts that you've created. Um, you can go back and delete these. Um, the difference between different users is um, that obviously like when you log in, it pushes your, it automatic, when you create a schedule, it automatically pushes your, um, pushes your, your, uh, your profile into the, uh, into the schedule. Um, so I can come in here, I can update my information um, and add different um, things to it, different licenses and ratings, update my hours. X, Y, Z. Um, yeah, so this is actually uh, my, my unit one project. So it's just the embedded weather app, which um, I didn't, I haven't figured out how to actually, I don't know how to actually embed it like so that it is like a little mini app at the bottom of the main screen. So that's something I'd like to do. This is a gallery uh, of all the photos that I have, which I do have in here, but I can't figure out how to work it. Um, all the CSS and everything is set up to kind of like look like this sort of a gallery. But yeah, that's basically the main functionality of, of the website. You can add aircrafts, update and delete them. So there's three different models where you can add, update and delete. Um, and so my most difficult issue was this here actually. Um, and this was referencing the um, the aircraft in the schedule model. So the way that the model is set up um, in schedule is that the aircraft is referenced, uh, which is fine, and the aircraft is re referenced here. In terms of interface and user usability for um, a student or instructor to go in, create a schedule, and add the aircraft, I was running into this issue of wanting the whole form page to include the schedule, uh, all the schedule keys that you would enter in. So I wanted them to be able to select the date, select the instructor and select the aircraft that had been created in the background, right? My issue was that you couldn't push a aircraft to an ID or reference um, an aircraft in a schedule that hadn't been created yet. So there was this, these functions here really, um, I, w I re I, these were redone over and over and over again. Um, and Sam and, and David were actually able to help me quite a bit um, to figure this out. Um, and we ran into a lot of issues here as well, mapping through the, um, the aircrafts that had been created and wanting to populate them. Um, a lot of issues with this and still can't quite figure out why it's doing that. Um, so that was 
very frustrating. I spent a lot of time trying to just figure out this, this connection between the two things. Um, a lot of that came from my models, the, the way that they were originally set up, they were very convoluted and everything was being referenced within each other. Um, again, it got really messy really quickly. So I think like what I wanted to happen and what Node or JavaScript is actually capable of are two different things because I don't fully understand everything that JavaScript or Node is capable of. And so I wanted it to do things that it, they just can't do, which we found out. It's like, no, you, you just, it doesn't have that functionality. So that was frustrating. So there, I had to work around a lot of things to get it to do what I wanted. And obviously right now it's still not doing that. Um, and then my, I don't really have a favorite, um, UI page. I mean, I hate them all equally. Um, they're pretty hard, but um, it's it's orange. <laughs> I don't know. There you go. <laughs> I um, I really want to get better at CSS because right now it's just such a it's such a headache for me, and I just dread I dread it so much. And this is so messy. I feel like there this is not dry coding. Um, and I think that with all of these different pages and routes and everything, uh, a lot of people probably ran into this, like repeating themselves with, um, with classes and IDs and really saying the same thing in you know, different, um, different things here, but because you have so many different pages, you just keep repeating yourself and saying, oh, I need to make this more specific. So I really wanna figure out a way to condense a lot of this CSS here because I just feel like it's, it's repetitive and excessive and it still only looks like this. I feel like that's a bit ridiculous that I put that much code for it to look this ugly still. So it's just, um, it's frustrating. So I was like, you know what, I'm done with this. And I think that's where a lot of people use, you know, bootstrap and just to make things easier. Um, but I didn't do that from the beginning and it would have taken a lot of work. So that's something I'd like to um, revisit later on when, um, I'm not so sick of this right now, sick of staring at the same code, but, um, yeah, that's basically it. Um, I think like one of my main takeaways, uh, from this project was how much fun I had working with other people. Um, and, you know, just kind of dividing and be, and being equally invested in everybody's success as my own. And, um, I was very happy to get certain functions working. I'm like, yes, we got one done. Now let's work on yours. And that was just really exciting for me to just kind of be collaborative and excited about everyone's projects and learning from their projects. Um, there were so many times even um, watching other people's presentations and their functionality and what they were able to accomplish. I'm like, wow, okay, cool. I'm gonna use that in mine or I'm gonna do this in my project, which was, um, really refreshing uh, because that's real world experience and that's what's going to happen uh, when we're working. You know, you're going to be um, cheering each other on and in the end, we all want to be um, productive and we all want functionality. And um, so, yeah, that's, that was pretty exciting for me. Um, and I'm excited that there's a lot that I can still learn and build on in this website or this app. Um, there's still so much I want to do. Um, just haven't done it yet, but yeah, that's pretty much it. This is, this is great. I think you've taken some big, big lessons out of this unit that, you know, the, those are the surprising ones, right? Like when you start working with people and you realize not only how much more productive you can be, but how good it feels to help troubleshoot someone else's code sometimes and like give a refreshing, I see a lot of you nodding right now. Like we've been telling y'all work in groups, work, work on this stuff in either pair programming or groups. And, uh, it'll, you'll develop a, a better understanding of the material by teaching it to somebody else. And you might not think, well, I can't teach this. Like there's no way I could teach this, but it's not really that it's just figuring out your problems together. Uh, it's just, it's not only is it fun, it, it's, uh, uh, it's just a better way to learn sometimes. So I'm glad you, I'm glad you got that experience. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, cause everyone's going to need to do that here in a couple of weeks when we get going with react projects. So. Yeah, uh, it was very fun working with, working on other people's projects. Um, actually more so like, because it gave you a break from staring at your own same code over <laughs> for hours and hours 
and you just get frustrated and you lose interest in your own. So um, to keep getting those reps in and to keep practicing and not just completely give up, but helping somebody else, you still feel productive, even though it's not, you know, you're not doing anything. You, you also feel less guilty when you ask for help, <laughs> when you've been collaborative with other people, you're not just always the one that's save me, you know, the damsel in distress constantly. So that, cause that feels bad. Cause once you feel when you feel like you're always asking for help, but never really contributing back you, after a while, you're like, I, I, I think I've reached my limit on, <laughs> you know, I don't get to ask for help anymore because it's been too much. Um, so just kind of like, having that reciprocation of, of help is, will make you feel better too. Cause, um, working with other people a lot and kind of like, even though I wasn't that helpful, um, I still felt comfortable asking, uh, for help because everyone needs help. That's it. Very cool. Anybody have any questions for Lulu? I think your app is like very, like there's a lot going on and you got it to the point that you did and you should be very proud of that. <laughs> like there is a whole lot going on in your data structure and like your models and things that would have made me very, very upset and would have put a lot of roadblocks in anyone's path. And I'm, I think that you should be very proud of where, where you got to. It's very cool. And I think that you've, provided yourself a nice foundation for like jumping up mm -hmm. and it's something that you are going to use in your life which is super amazing too like that this might just be like a site that you actually use it is super cool absolutely thank you yeah, yeah. Cool. let's all have a round of applause for lulu Jonathan, it's time. All right. All right. Let's see. Where's my glasses? I had no idea where I put them. Whatever. I'll do it. Okay. Um. So let's share the screen. I guess. Get this train wreck going. Uh, uh, what screen am I sharing with y'all? Can I share the wrong screen? We saw your GitHub. Okay, okay, good. See, that's why I needed the glasses. Um, so, <laughs> welcome to Trip Links and the train wreck that it is. Um, my Trello um, threw it out, and I'm just going to go ahead and say that I am the poster child for everything that you should not do during this project. Um, uh, yeah, that was not a good idea. I let my ambition, uh, get ahead of me. Um, the concept though, um, I think is still really cool. Um, is that it is a travel log in the form of an app. So you can create or users can create, um, travel logs. Um, and the idea, which I spent way too much time on was that once you create a log, it will auto-generate through a couple APIs and place a marker on a map. And then you can click on the marker and see um, the name of whatever that log is, whatever you know, name that user gave it, um, the destination, <laughs> um, and you know, a little blurb. And then of course, there's going to, there'd be a read more or you know, additional details. Um, and so that would allow users to see where their friends have gone and, and what logs their friends have posted, um, as well as to be able to comment on, you know, their trip. Hey, how was it? Or that was very cool or really cool pictures and so on and so forth. Um, and so my Trello board, um, threw it all out last week, um, whenever this just blew up in my face. Um, so I need to update the Trello board uh, for the new models and I'll, I'll show you them. Um, technologies used, like everybody said thus far, pretty much the same with the exception of uh, 
GeoCoder, um, GeoCoder JSON, and Mapbox GLJS, um, which are the three uh, main APIs that I was using to generate coordinates, maps, all that data and information, which I can show you. Um, <laughs> what I plan to implement coming really soon, as in starting, you know, today, tomorrow, um, I could, I believe, and I, you know, the instructors can attest to this. I, I said, I can do this a lot of times last week. Um, but I'm going to go forward and uh, put my front end, at least my map, into React, um, which I believe um, everything will fit a little bit nicer. Um, and, you know, what I learned, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, so here, oh, well, that's that. So let's open the app. Um, let's see, is it going to open? It was open earlier. Well, let me just roll with that punch. Um, there it is. Okay. So first things first, styling, <laughs> almost non-existent. Um, when I was styling or trying to add some style, uh, I think I realized why none of my CSS was going through. And I can show you in my code. Um, I think it had something to do with how I coded the APIs. Um, it's just the two don't like each other. Um, I could enter, you know, some CSS styling and nothing would change. Um, so that's that. Um, so we'll just log in here. Um, I'll just log in under this one. Um, standard bars, um, add log, uh, travel logs, uh, my profile, user list. Uh, we'll come back to that. And then of course, log out, um, log out functional so we'll go back in um, if the user wants to add a log well we'll just add it so title um, sure go cloud nine destination sure go um, description uh, say Get away, don't judge me on my spelling. And send and send would definitely go again. And date, I don't know, it was like April 2018, something. Uh, so we'll go there. Again, glasses would be really awesome right now. Um, yes, it's somewhere around that window. And then of course, you know, add entry. Um, and so there's the information. Uh, I have a comments bit too. Um, this is where other users can comment. Oh, wow, how sure you That was awesome. Oh, yeah, I love your pictures. Um, you know, or trolls can post, oh, okay, you know, KYS yourself or something. Um, so that's that. Um, and of course, if we go here, it'll show. Um, I discovered this bug not 10 minutes before we had lunch where I asked uh, my wife to quickly you know, log in and make a post. And then I realized, oh no, I can see her post. And of course I could delete it if I wanted to. Um, so that's, that's something I just discovered. And I was kind of working on it during lunch and didn't make a lot of progress. Um, so that's something to go back and fix ASAP. Um, of course, um, we have, you know, uh, I guess the code didn't update there, but that should be um, linked to the details. Um, so it's a little bit of a bug there. But anyway, um, that is the app. Um, and then the, I guess the last thing I'd like to share uh, in terms of the program. <gasps> you monster, you're not going to work. I didn't even touch you. Anyway, I was going to show you the map that was rendered. I kept all that code in the... Uh, in my app just because. Why don't you demo uh, the local host version? Because I I'd think this map to. thing is really cool and I want people to see it. I, I would love to because, you know, I think it'd be nice for people to see why I wasted so much of my time. Uh, it was a very ambitious project. Um, so let me go here, local. I'm quite proud, even though I uh, couldn't get it to work, but 
So we'll log in with Google. And then we'll go to map. Oh, did I break the code? Jonathan, you jerk. Well, if I can get it running after my presentation, I can share it by the end of the day. I think I know why I broke it. You um, the URL? It just seems like it's when you're clicking it, there's no URL. So maybe if you remember it. Yeah, I would. I, I, it's something I would absolutely love to share because even though I couldn't get it working, um, and this was Friday, um, Friday afternoon, actually, uh, Friday afternoon, um, Shazad, Ben, and David kind of pulled me aside and, and said, hey, John, you get your, get your act together. Um, it was actually Saturday morning at 3 a.m. I was still trying to get the map to generate the markers. Couldn't do it. So at that point, I gave up. And, you know, I had to pull lots of all-nighters since Saturday morning and now um, just to put something together. But I was still, and, you know, still proud of that map. Um, and so you're going to see a lot of extra files, like a lot of extra models, um, like places model, maps model. These are associated with the maps. Again, I kept it all in there. Um, in the view alone, uh, for places wrote over, you know, 160 lines of code, just trying to make that one work. And I've done that over and over and over again. Um, and so, um, again, I do believe, um, that I'm going to, uh, tomorrow, actually, I'm going to start jumping into react, uh, at least for the map. Um, I think that'll generate there um, because again, I'm going to hold true to this uh, vision. Um, in terms of the code, is there anything in particular that um, you guys are interested? I mean, the model is fairly Can straightforward. Can the URL directly into the, the oh. browser? Because yeah. maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. that you can show the map um, that way if you, instead of because the link is obviously something's wrong with the link, but maybe you can just go in your browser and type in the route directly. Sure. Because so it. it is super cool. Like, I mean. Yeah, I know now where it's Tyler fantastic. lives. Me and Anna oh and Tyler were up late with him. And we uh, I think it was Friday night. And it is here. very, very cool. It's, it's nuts. Like, I would never think to use something like that as an API. But it's a rendering of my house, like a CAD model. Yeah. We spent a lot of time just fascinated with the map itself. So it's worth trying to get it to pull up right now. Oh, and we looked at your airfield, didn't we, Lulu? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. looked at we my airport. That. That, was, that was really cool, <laughs> Yeah, too. they were able to see, he was able to, like, zoom in on my airport, and, like, where I flew by myself for the first time, which was cool. Okay, so that's places. And that's places. Oh, that's add place. You have a maps.js routes file maybe it's in there i actually put it in places uh, but i actually you know, let's try maps because i've done so many things to this code exploration no it's it's in places um maps was actually the first model um that i started doing and then and and really that was despite um the very poor decisions that I've made um, last week. Um, the benefit to that was I was able to play with the MVC model so much um, that it became you know, very easy for me um, to, to begin to set things up and uh, to go from there. And uh, it made the last three days a lot easier. Uh, granted, I made, you know, my fair share of mistakes in the last three days, um, <laughs> referenced by the entries, uh, but I was able to, you know, get this app out in three days, whereas if I didn't have that experience, I, I think I just would have threw in the towel and said, okay, just give me the F for this. Um, and so the experience alone was really, really cool. Um, I, I began to feel like Captain Ahab. Um, in chasing this map, um, 
and I, and I made a reference somewhere in my code about it um, because I just, it was stubbornness, didn't want to give up and I still don't. Um, but it, time really was a concern. And, uh, and I, you know, if I would have listened Friday afternoon, um, I, I think things would have been, you know, it would have looked that much prettier, that much better. Um, and so there's still some work to be done. Um, but I'm kind of happy with, you know, what I managed to do. Um, I will, uh, I'll, I'll sit here and try and figure out what happened to maps. I think I have an idea. I was playing around with the uh, view um, this morning a, a little bit. And uh, I think I know what I did. So if I can get that up, I'll, I'll share it before we end for the day. Cool. I think that, I would love to. You, um, you were very adamant about your idea. And I, I respect that. I think that it's, it's tough sometimes to have other people tell you now you probably shouldn't do that. And, you know, it's, that might be too much work because I think the same way I think, well, no, I want to make it work. I'm just going to do it. And um, it's really tough sometimes to have to be able to say, you know what, I got to take all of the stuff that's supposed to be really fun out of my app so that I can yes. present something that works. It's, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a tough thing to do. Um, and I think that, I think you learned a, a pretty big lesson from this. Um, and it's, it's it's just a tough experience. Sometimes you have to roll with the punches and I think you've done a, a good job bouncing back from that. So um, I really hope you get this up and running because I, I saw you working on this the other day and it's such a cool thing. Yeah, um, yeah it, it shouldn't be that hard. I, I Again, I think I just messed with the view um, a little bit. It'll be easy to get up. So uh, before we end for the day, I'll share it. Cool. React is like prime use case for this, by the way. Like Yes. There are, Every... you can just get React components and just put them on a page and you're good to go. And um, that's, that's exactly what I'm doing tomorrow. And, and, and all the documentation, um, I think I found, uh, I, I know I, I put in at least 25 hours, if not more reading and uh, reading documentation and watching videos. And I would have to say about 90% or more was all React based. Um, I think there was only one source that I could find um, that would, you know, that didn't include React, and even that didn't work for me. And so I, yeah, I went down so many rabbit holes. Uh, does anybody have any questions for Jonathan? Just getting a look at the functionality of it, like I, I can't wait to see it. I'm really excited to see it, Jonathan. It's uh, it's pretty cool. I, you know, the finished product. You know, I've got nothing going on over Christmas break. Um, and so it's going to be my, my pet project. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'll definitely be happy to share the map before we end for the day. We also all are very aware of how detailed uh, you are and how much work you put into your projects just on your unit one project alone. So obviously, I mean, we can all just look at this and know uh, this is not your best work because clearly you just put it together for um, passing purposes. But the uh, the level of code, I mean, again, Erica and Tyler, Tyler and I saw it all and it is, he literally created an entire 3D map and it was just beautiful oh, and everything. absolutely, absolutely impressive. So, um, this is not a representation of what he's capable of at all. He's probably one of, yeah, he's very dedicated to making it exactly what he wants. And, and that's, and that's uh, one of the, you know, one of the cool things, strengths about me, but it's also in this case, a big weakness um, is that coming from, you know, just a different mindset, I need to think more like an engineer and break things down a little bit more whereas I'm used to focusing mostly on the big picture. So it's, it's been a, I guess, a big personal growth uh, as well as, you know, professional. Uh, now, now I just need to uh, adhere to that lesson. Um, cool. Which you'll, you'll get there. Sure, shout out. Well, everybody, let's have a round of applause for Jonathan.
Jennifer, you are up next. Okay, hello. Um, so let me get the screen share. Okay, um, so this is my app. It's called Faceify. Um, just to preface this project with a roller coaster, um, the whole unit was, I think, but um, also a lot of fun. And I'll kind of get more into uh, like the process of everything um, in a little bit here. Um, so I am, I have an esthetician's license. Um, and that was the industry I was in uh, prior to entering software development. And for this project, I really wanted to see how those two would interact, um, if there was a need to fill, uh, so on and so forth. And um, in doing my research, um, the need that I saw was help, like, um, publicly available knowledge. Um, I initially wanted to work with an API um, and I was shocked to find that there was really no, um, no brands, uh, like skincare brands, that had any sort of publicly available uh, database. Um, and it, that's kind of in line with like the whole vibe of if you're dropping someone's name, you're paying them. Um, that's just kind of the nature of that industry. Um, and while I get it, you know, people need to work and estheticians need to get paid, dermatologists need to get paid, everyone needs to get paid. Um, but the fact of the matter is not everyone has access to those types of uh, services. Uh, not everyone is interested in those types of services. Um, so I kind of wanted to go in the direction of creating more of a community space uh, where people can uh, talk about skincare and share their knowledge. Um, this is like the super bare bones version. Um, I have a lot to do with it. <sighs> um, so the styling is a little bit wonky, which you'll see. Uh, so technology is used similar to everyone else. Um, I can launch the app here. It, there we go. I would say it was working right before lunch. <laughs> um, so you can click the get started button. Um, this is just a random email I have, my junk email. Um, and you can log in. You are brought to a profile page um, where you can update info. Um, so like if you want it to stay somewhat balanced. Dry goals bio. Um, it will uh, update your profile page for you. Um, so that's a, a new user. And then logging in with my main account. So um, same thing, everyone gets brought to their profile. Um, you can also edit your information. Um, so if you wanted to update your bio, um, you can update that here. And uh, the purpose of this is to have a publicly available database uh, where people can contribute products. Uh, so say there's something that I really like and I want to share it. Um, I can add it to the database and it will populate here. Um, one of my Icebox features for the site is to have a search function in the database uh, so people can search products based on their skin type, 
or concerns. So someone can type in acne and it'll populate products that treat acne. Um, with that, I also wanted to put tags um, in the add product section. Uh, so there's a lot more I wanna add here too. Uh, so people can tag oily, acne, dry, um, all of that. Um, and then the details page, this is not the most, most elegant uh, details page, but um, you can read about the product so you can see the full description um, and then also see comments on it. Uh, so you can kind of see what other people are saying about it. Um, if you really like a product, you can add it to your collection. Um, I know it doesn't look like that did anything, which is another Icebox uh, feature, but it will populate your uh, collection of products to refer back to, um, which you can also remove. Um, so it is removed and it does not uh, delete them from the actual database. So it's only removing the product on that profile. Um, okay, so details, yeah. Uh, so that's the database. I want to add a lot more. Like I want to give the user the ability to add a link uh, where someone could go purchase the product if they wanted to. Um, and then I said the search function and the tags. Um, we just have this look a little bit more organized. Um, and then there's also the message board. Um, this is meant to be a place where people can just post questions um, about skincare. Um, so maybe something that they're struggling with, something that they're curious about. Um, like, hey, I went to the store and this brand had like 10 face creams to treat this thing I'm looking to treat. Uh, has anyone had any experience with this brand? People can talk about ingredients. Um, just like a community share center, basically. Um, so you can post a message uh, and it will populate there. You can uh, view the thread of a message and start having a conversation. Um, you can also click on a username. Oh, okay. So that's a bug. That is supposed to go to the profile of the person who um, who made the post so that you can kind of just check out their profile and see what they're about and what they're interested in. Um, I do want to add somewhat of like a, a friends feature. Um, I also want to set up an individual um, like chat box within the profiles so that people can have more one on one conversations because sometimes there's things that we don't necessarily want to share with the public um, that we just want to talk to our friends about. So. Um, and it is all meant to be skincare uh, focused. So I acknowledge that would require a lot of moderation. Um, I designed it more so with a mobile first approach. Um, so I'm still kind of working out perfecting it on um, mobile devices. Uh, and then I'm gonna work out from there. Uh, so to make it more uh, browser friendly, um, I think if I ever did deploy something like this, it would only be an app though, as opposed to a browser application. Um, yeah. uh, so that's it uh, so far. Um, so next steps would definitely be to clean up the CSS uh, and just the general styling. Um, I chose more of a sugar pop kind of theme because that's how I was feeling that day. Um, but I definitely want something that's a little bit more approachable and, and universal. Um, so just, I don't know, just polish it up. Um, and then adapt the styling for larger screens. Like as you saw, the message board looks kind of weird. Um, 
So do the replies. So yeah, just <laughs> styling is my weakest point. Uh, so I'm going to put a lot of focus into that, I think, because um, I do, I do want to learn it. Um, so I at least can, you know, write something up um, on a base level. I mean, the styling took me way too long. And that's what I ended up with. Um, adding tags to the database, like I mentioned, implementing the search function to kind of narrow things down for users. Um, add the ability to uh, link to where people can purchase products. And then also add the ability to add the OP in the message board so that users are um, made aware when people re reply to their threads so that they can interact with the messages and have those conversations. Um, looking at the code, um, this is the user model. Uh, so there's the user schema and then the favorites, which I renamed collection. So that's another thing I have to do is go through um, and make sure everything is uh, named consistently because right now it's not uh, for, the, uh, for the collection. Um, and then the product schema, which is where I embedded the comments um, and referenced the, um, the users posting the products, which I also want to do, do more with later. And then this is the message board schema where I embedded the uh, replies. Um, Styling is just, I'm not happy with it. A lot of it repeats itself. Um, I used a lot more IDs than I was happy with. Um, so I wanna go back and, and figure that out. Uh, my favorite EJS was probably the profile one. Um, it is the same, the same exact bootstrap from Game Goose. Um, and I really needed to break it down to understand uh, what all of these uh, words, uh, with the, what the like ARIA selected data toggle. And I learned a ton about accessibility. Um, and I thought that was really, that was amazing. Um, yeah, I don't like EJS. I don't like H, I don't like writing it. I don't like HTML. Um, but I did the thing. Um, key takeaways, I, so when I initially started the project, it looked completely different. Um, my initial project was based off of something called the Good Face Project, which in aesthetics is an app that allows you to enter all of your uh, skin information, basically, and you get returned a regimen. Um, and it basically does the job of an esthetician. Um, and I think that's a little bit scary, but also fascinating. Um, and I wanted to play with technology like that. And I quickly realized I didn't have the skills yet to do so. Um, so then I was using an API. Um, the only one in existence of its kind is a skincare API produced by another student at another school. Um, and then I found out later than I should um, that it wasn't the most flexible to be able to utilize. Um, and I was at a point where it was like, okay, spend days trying to figure this out and um, not have much of a direction or a project um, or just kind of throw in the towel on the idea, which um, I did. I even cried. <laughs> like it was, it was so frustrating. Um, and uh, David Shazad and Ben were extremely helpful in just not letting me quit, uh, which I was really close to doing. And I'm super beyond grateful that that didn't happen. Um, because like once I found like a direction with this, I, I had a blast and my list of iSpot features is way longer than what's on here. I just have to be able to, to organize the thoughts with that. Um, I also utilized the support channel a lot more this time around, um, and that actually helped me overcome like the strongest anxieties when it came to asking for help. 
um, cause that is something that I struggle with, um, a lot. Like it's crippling anxiety that happens when it comes to asking for help. And, um, I loved it and it helped, it also helped me to engage a little bit more in, um, engaging in, uh, like debugging sessions, um, like with the TAs and, um, with other students and it was just, this was my favorite unit. Um, mostly like I, I like backend stuff a lot. Um, like I found a, a flow with debugging that just felt so good. Like I knew exactly where to look for my problems at one point and it was like success. <laughs> um, but also this was like a huge personal journey for me and a really, really good one. Um, and I'm kind of proud of myself considering what my unit one project was. Um, and yeah, I'm I looking forward should, to it. You should be more than kind of proud of yourself. I think you, you came a long way in this unit and it, it shows your app looks great. I know just like you mentioned, you know, you, you went for a while with that API and you're like, ah, I can make it work. And, you know, it got to the point where you had to pivot and pivot hard. And I think you did a fantastic job with it. I think, I think your app looks great. I actually love the styling on it. So you did a, you did a great job. I think you learned a lot, um, in the last third of this project. Um, and like you said, when you, when you get into that rhythm and you, you finally just did things just click, it's just like, it's the best feeling ever. And I'm glad that you got, you got to experience that as kind of a reward for, you know, the hard work you put in on this project. So good work. Definitely. Yeah. And, um, Sam, Sam G was so helpful. Um, and so were a few of the students. So thank you everyone who kind of helped me debug and stuff. Yeah, this was a really good, good thing. Thank you. Um, now you need to produce your own API so that there's a good API out there for skincare products. So you yeah. can make it, you can produce it and, and that charge is the people all the money to use it. Actually, I, no, I, after this, I would make it just publicly available. I mean, like maybe five to 10 years down the road, I make some kind of like API that I can sell to companies. But um, the first goal of this database is eventually to be able to extract the data and turn it into something that other users can use. Because I think without that type of in information uh, publicly available, it inhibits a lot of just innovation, um, which I think is why the skincare and just beauty industry in general, like is up here when it comes to sales, like it's a billion dollar industry. Um, in the tech world though, it's too closed off. Um, and I, I don't see a reason why, like there's ways to go about it um, that help with like liability concerns and keeping jobs and um, yeah, so long-term goal. <laughs> Cool. So what's your favorite affordable skincare product? Favorite affordable skincare product. Honestly, um, so Neutrogena, they have a salicylic face wash. It's the one in the orange bottle. Um, the ingredients are great um, for a commercial brand that you can get almost anywhere. Um, not harmful uh, and it works like I have it in my shower um, if any other esthetician ever heard me say that <laughs> they'd kick me out of the industry but yeah it's it's Neutrogena the acne clearing face wash awesome thank you of course I have to say though, for somebody similar to me not liking styling and everything you did a lot of base work for some stylistic features that you can really expand on and I think it looks great as it is um, and the fact that you want to do more with it um, you already have such a great foundation and I mean you did like all the media queries and setting up the um, 
the mobile app and everything. And that's, that's really great. I think you have such like a strong foundation to put, to just go with it. I mean, I can actually look at your app and everything and know exactly what you're talking about when you say it. Like with my features, I'm like, blah, blah, blah. This is what I want, you know, but I, no one can actually tangibly see it. But with yours, it's like, it's all there. And so when you're saying, I want to do this, I want to do that. It's like, wow. Yeah, I see it. You can do it. It looks great. That's such a hard part about design in the first place is just nailing that foundation. So if you can do that, then like design can come after, but just like having that really, I agree, like that really great base where you can like visualize on the screen, you're like, oh, this is exactly where everything is. That just like saves so much heartbreak down the road. So well done on that. Thank you. Thank you, Lulu, and thank you, Brady. Um, yeah, I spent way, way too much time to get there, which is, I feel like I could have focused more on my icebox features, um, but instead I chose to focus on the styling. But it seems, it, you know, I guess, thank you. I was really self-conscious about it. <laughs> There's definitely a lot of people that could learn from like what you've done here. So I feel very good about it. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions for Jennifer? Or round of applause for Jennifer. Thank you. Next up, we have Sophia. Hi guys. Get all set up here. Hello. Okay. So, uh, can everybody hear me? All right. That's a so, yes. Thank you. Sorry. I have my uh, views moved aside because they're distracting. All right. So my project, um, I wanted to do something where I could, uh, collect, like collect the wines that I've tried. My husband and I like to drink wine, but he will go and buy like seven different bottles for us to like try over the next couple of weeks. And then when it's like, which one do we like? Never remember. Um, so I thought this would be a good application um, to kind of tackle that. And then I also wanted to be able to add pairings, um, like recipe pairings and stuff like that to the wines. Um, so that's that. A um, couple of screenshots. Uh, Technology is used really the same as everybody else, um, except for maybe CSS Animate. Um, I use some icons from the Noun Project, which you'll see. Uh, okay, so I might end up going from localhost because this has been kind of slow for me um, lately for some reason. All right, that is that. Let's log in. Okay, um, so let's see, let's, oh, let me log out and log back in. I think that's what I'm supposed to do. I love the animation. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay, so let's add a wine. The name of the wine is Radius Bridal Cabernet. I don't see a year. We're going to just copy image address. We're going to paste that. And we're going to copy this. So the wine uh, region. Perfect. And oops, sorry. Twelve ninety nine. Oops, ninety nine. And we'll say it. Okay. Add that. Now it's at the bottom. Um, I have this conditionally rendering years because there's a couple that just don't have years, so this was easier. 
Oh, we can click on that. It does not have any pairings. Also, uh, for like the regular viewer won't see this. This is just when I'm logged in under my email address, um, which I can show you a little bit later. Uh, but so this is the new wine. Uh, we can click here. It's going to give you more info at total wine. Um, it's nobody's made it a favorite. Let's do that. Uh, there we go. Nobody's left a review. So let's do that. And that's in there with a score. Uh, I'll add it to my wine list too. Okay, and then from there, we're going to go and made it a favorite. So let's go down here and add a pairing. Uh, so what did you pair it with? I'm gonna pick something that I could have spelled a little bit easier. Okay, recipe URL goes here, website name. I never did anything with this, but it's still here. <laughs> So let's add pairing, and now you can see the pairing button comes up because it has a pairing. We can view pairings. Here we go. We can go on and see the recipe at Simply Recipes if you want to make it. Uh, and only I can delete this, um, so I can show you that with, I think this one has enough pairings. Yeah, so I can't delete my fr friends um pairings but i can delete my own um and you know there's user lists you can go in and see jenny's favorite wines i don't know why she's not my friend um so i really this started off as wine goose because <laughs> i really like uh uh, up till like Wednesday of last week, basically all I had done was my OAuth because I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> so I really had to like go through um, the Game Goose and just kind of start out by just doing exactly <laughs> what we did, but by myself and with my own stuff. Um, and then from there, uh, this amazing thing happened and I finally just got it. And that is a, an incredibly satisfying feeling. And from there, there was just a lot that I was able to do. And um, I would have loved to add more stuff, but I just like cut myself off because I just, I did not want to cause any new problems for myself when I had a working product. So, um, but yeah, I mean, that's about it. Anybody got any questions or did I not address something? <laughs> um, I love your alias. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Thank you. Find <laughs> bats coming through. Uh, yeah, sorry, guys. Um, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. Would totally use this. It's it, great. It's it awesome. looks amazing. Yeah. Uh, I love it. You guys, so let me let me and I love the shadow behind the cards. It's really cool. Those little things make a huge difference to me. It does. Let me show you, this is my CSS. This is all I did, 39 lines of CSS and everything from here down is just that like icon landing page and the welcome page. Hmm. Everything else I did in Bootstrap and I am so thankful <laughs> because it was, I mean, I've heard a lot of people talking about their like styling issues and I, tried to adjust some stuff with bootstrap early on and I'm, i'll actually slack the photo of like what it looked like when i tried to change one little thing it's absurd so i was like nope i will not be touching that not one more time so i just really stuck with uh what bootstrap had available for me <laughs> and just tried to learn how to use their like abbreviations and stuff like that and i'm, I'm really happy about it i want to continue um, learning bootstrap because essentially I put this together from like Friday on 
because I was just like, I just didn't get it <laughs> until I did. Um, so yeah, that's about it. <laughs> anybody want to see code or like, what can I show anybody? How did, how did you do the animation? I'm really oh, curious. And where did you well, get it from? Girl, this is the easiest thing to do. <laughs> uh, it is, let me show you uh, here. It's just animate CSS and I put it on like delay. So it looks like it's kind of, I mean, it's just, it is so such a simple way to kind of add a little punch to something. And I learned that from my last, um, my last project, I actually like went in and lifted like the classes from a lot of the, the, the animate um, stuff that I had in there before, but it's super easy to use would highly recommend it to anyone. Um, it, it's called animate CSS or yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I just, I just linked it in the yeah. last chat. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So when you said you had this moment of revelation and the, you know, the skies opened up and everything was wonderful and I'm so happy for you because it's always nice to see that. Yeah. What, <laughs> what did you do to get there? Like, what do you I think literally got you there? went through and did game goose with my own. And when I came up to something like, so I wasn't using an API. So I tried at first to put together the uh, search function. I realized that slug was like a big part of that. And I didn't have that like written into my models and stuff like that. Um, so just kind of like having to figure out my own stuff while still having like a little bit of structure to go with. And then from there, like the ad pairings and all that stuff, that stuff I wrote totally, totally, completely like alone. And, and, and it was just, I was nailing it. Like each time I was nailing my routes and I, it just, it made me after three weeks of like mental darkness, <laughs> it was a really positive feeling to, to, you know, finally like get there. And then I also made it mobile responsive mostly. So, which is a big thing for me. Like I, I want all my stuff to be mobile responsive. So, um, yeah, that's, yeah. I just, I just kept <laughs> side by side doing the, the game goose and doing this. And then, and then finally it just, it just all made sense suddenly. And, and then I was kind of off to the races by myself. There's a bunch of stuff I wish I, could have done. Um, I wish instead of having the recipe model in the wine model, um, oops, that's not my model, sorry. Uh, I would have made that a separate resource, but I really didn't know what I was doing <laughs> when I started. So um, this pairing schema would be its own model uh, and then, or maybe not actually pairing, I don't, I don't know. Uh, but the wine, the recipes themselves, I would have liked to have them as their own resource, like the wine. So you could just add a wine or add a recipe. And then if you want, you could go into that wine. And when you added a pairing, um, like the recipes that you have in your file might, would pop up, would populate into like the drop down or the search bar or whatever. Um, so that's like what I would really do differently. It was very interesting to see like the different ways of being able to like match like pieces of data up. Um, I'm trying to think of where it is, but oh, in the pairings. Uh, oh, I think this one doesn't have a pairing. Um, hang on. Uh, which one am I looking for? So, like, uh, in the pairings, I did not want to be able to delete someone else's pairing. Um, and I did, <laughs> sorry, Nick. Uh, um, I didn't want to delete someone else's, uh, be able to delete someone else's pairing or for them to be able to delete my pairings. So I actually didn't have, like, I had to match up their avatar string. That was like, the, so I know that's not perfect if they change their avatar, like they're, they're going to lose that functionality. But just being able to like, figure out like how to make all of that stuff work was extremely satisfying. I'm, I'm really happy. Um, so yeah, <laughs> anything else? <laughs> Can I see the functionality for the pairing? Uh, sure. It's right here. Oh, no, 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 no. Sorry. That's pairings. Pairings index is all right here. Yeah. 
And there's a lot of conditionals for in case people just don't enter something in, like if you don't wanna say the name of what you paired it with, but you put a bunch of other stuff in there, it still will come up and you'll be able to kind of see everything. Cool, yeah, maybe uh, we can meet up over break and you can walk through this with me a little bit because yeah. I'd love to learn this too. I would be more than happy to do that. There's gonna be a lot of studying over break for me. <laughs> Let's all have a round of applause for Sophia. Excellent work. Michael, do you have a up. particular favorite wine, by the way, before we go up to somebody else, or a particular type of wine? Red. Uh, I love cabs. I mean, I actually used to be like only a white wine drinker. I used to sell wine to restaurants for a living for like a short period of time. So our 9 a.m. meetings were like tasting Opus One and like it, I got to taste so many and try so many awesome wines. Um, and I was a big white wine drinker at the time. And somebody told me at the job, one of these days it's just gonna switch and that's exactly what happened. And now I'm like Cabernet all the way. <laughs> that was awesome. Um, yeah, great job. Thank you, guys. I think I'll take you back from one of the worst projects in the cohort today. Um, struggled so much through this. I think in the beginning, I uh, I like set it up really fast. I was I had like all set up right away, and all my scaffolding set up like the first day of the project, and I was so excited for that that I kind of underestimated all the work that was gonna need it to be done during, like during the middle and then finally the end. But uh, what I created was ArtDB and uh, I really love the idea because I'm really passionate about art and uh, that was the industry I was in before this. So uh, I just know the, the issue at hand of like locating art and you know, if you run a studio or a small gallery and you know, uh, being able to know where all your art is and what's being sent out, what's being received or sold and things like that. So yeah, uh, I wanted to use a, an API, but it was kind of above my skill level, but it's a really cool API that has like over 20,000 artworks in it you can access. Uh, so it's really bare bones. Um, these are the, the Trello board. The home page, of course, the technologies. And plan changes are uh, upload user art photos, which I uh, had researched was a package manager called Formidable that you could um, upload photos and like create like a photo database in your project. Um, of course, the UI is terrible, and I have a lot of crud bugs. It's, somewhat of an in incomplete project. But I think uh, over, the, over the break, if I really zero in on it, it could be what I set, it, set out for it to be. And so here it is. Log in. Add work. And, uh, uh, or something. Dimensions where it's located. Maybe it's in that. It's medium. In the year it was created, and you add the work, and it populates there. Oh, who just? Uh, someone created a a dolly. It's my favorite piece of art. I was testing your app out. Nice. Oh my god, and put a dolly in there. Um, and you go to details about the work and uh, add a review. And get nine and compelling. And it just populates right there. Uh, yeah, and uh, so you can go to your collection and all the update functionality I have at the moment is just for your user profile, which I intend to obviously make a lot better. But yeah, because like your ali my alias is coming up right next to the box and the boxes don't take you to a new place. 
I think uh, the most challenging thing is just for me, um, you know, keeping in mind so many different components and moving parts, it's just really overwhelming. Like, I, you know, and sometimes I, I have to like really pay attention to one thing and just all of the different, it was uh, super challenging for me. And uh, yeah, once, once I got to like the middle of my project to the update functionality and all of that, I just started really breaking down. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty much the project. Here's my code. Um, I guess in, in the last stretch of it to, to uh, implement the, the review schema and my model has helped me start to understand schemas and data referencing a bit more. I still don't really get it, but I'm waiting to have uh, Sophia's moment. Um, Hopefully, uh, I'll, I'll get that awakening soon. But uh, yeah. What's your favorite piece of art? My favorite piece of art? That's a loaded question. I, I'm actually a painter, so I like a lot of my own work. And uh, I've actually, George Kondo is one of my favorite artists. Our, the company I work with, we, um, solely handled his work. And so I got to work really closely in his studio and see all this stuff. So I like a lot of his work. I've always wanted to know what is behind you. Is that a green screen thing or is that an actual wall? Yeah, this is a wall. So my whole apartment is covered in art and the neighborhood I'm in is a art district in San Juan, Puerto Rico. So everywhere you go, it's like just covered with great graffiti and murals and all. <laughs> Everyone who has property, uh, you know, gets artists to fill it up. What's your favorite art museum? Favorite art museum? Where, where's the coolest, like, art place you've ever been? Uh, Scarstead and on the Upper East Side in Manhattan. Scarstead is great. And they have, they, they always house some of the, uh, the youngest and most uh, um, active artists, you know, like they, they house cause and like some of the, the most hyped up artists they, uh, they represent in there. So cool. That's very cool. What, um, if you could look back at your experience on this project and change anything about how you approached it, would you, or what, we, what would you do to make this easier if you had to do it again? Do you think you would have changed things in the planning phase or the execution phase or? Absolutely. You... For me, I would have, I, I think my, myself personally would benefit from like a huge white ball, whiteboard. Um, I think planning, the planning stage and like really setting up before I, you know, went in. But at the same time, now that I made it to the end, now I kind of know the whole process, whereas in the beginning, I really didn't have a good idea. So now going into another project like this, I'll have a better idea of how to visualize and plan it anyway, so. Yeah. Definitely a little better at understanding uh, schemas and, and, you know, all the creative relationships. I think uh, that would be super helpful. Anyone else have any questions for Michael? Round of applause for Michael. If you haven't checked out that Dolly piece, like Lobster Telephone, I, I went to London for a trip with my wife last year. Um, she was there for work and I just went for fun. And I saw that in the Tate Modern and it was just like bloom. I just, st I stood there looking at it for like five minutes. And now I finally understood like, this is what all those weird, crazy people that just stand there and look at art are doing. Like, I was just I mesmerized thought, by this I lobster was telephone. I pull up a painting, and then I Googled it, and it's legit a lobster telephone. <laughs> I'm going to Google that now. I just put it in Slack. Check it out. It is the coolest fucking thing I've ever seen in my entire life. It's just, it, I mean, you say lobster telephone, and then you look at it, and we're like, yeah, no shit, that's a lobster yep. telephone. <laughs> <laughs> no shit. Some people get up. <laughs> 
experience looking at art, you know, just can stand there and just start it up. Yeah. Moment. Anyone ever seen any um, Dolly interviews, like on a late night show or any interview? They are the most hilarious, um, enriching experiences of your life. You should totally watch those. It must have been really wacky. Sebastian, you ready to do this? Uh, yes, hi. Um... How are you? How are, how's everyone? A lot of pressure right now on you, Sebastian. Why? Well, our uh, last project, last unit, I went overboard. So maybe that's why you people are expecting a lot from me. Uh, this unit, I was really chill, to be honest. I just wanted to do something very simple. Uh, pretty much the exam, just adding your... Oh, well, I should, should share my screen. Um, so, uh, yes, I did a book collector thing, kind of like Miranda's, but water it down. Um, yeah, uh, pretty cool. Tons of CSS, uh, a lot of CSS. I have almost, uh, 1500 lines of CSS. Um, and it's I, I, it's a love hate relationship with it, but that that's not the point. Um, yeah, technology is used uh, pretty much the same as everyone else's. Uh, background music, I got permission from the uh, composer, basically. Some screenshots of the app, uh, an early wireframe, and the Trello board thing. Um, my Heroku deployment, it's, it's kind of weird. So to avoid any issues with that, I'll just launch the app from localhost, if that's OK. Um, that's fine. Yeah, so so do you guys want audio or not? I mean, Am yeah. I sharing audio? I don't know. We don't hear anything if you are. Share sound. Okay, so go to localhost. Um, yeah, this is all pure CSS. Um, yeah, you have some music. Let me know if it's too loud. Uh, yeah, you can log in either here or here. Um, yeah, shows you your profile. If you log in as Nicholas, it will say, uh, welcome Nicholas, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then here is where all the magic happens. I don't know what that just happened, but uh, you can go to all your books or actually add a new book. Simple form. Uh, char. So the front is, um, was that in? Something like that. Uh, let's round it up. Uh, are you ready? Yes, no. Blah, blah, blah. Add new book. And then uh, this, well, I miss a spell, but this is the details page. You can see all the details of the book, uh, a small short description, the name, uh, well, thing to delete it, to update it, uh, not a review thing you can write the review um, very long waiting oh my five. god CSS gasp I'm sorry like this is incredible <laughs> CSS what <laughs> gasp oh and then the review shows here uh, yeah ugly this is the, the my least proud CSS achievement this reviews thing um, yeah, and then you can basically delete it or update it. Um, I don't know. Bible? <laughs> I guess. Uh, let's go with Yoda. After gone this year, blah, blah, blah. 
Yes. <laughs> Set around it shows you Yoda. Um, yeah, you can delete it. It shows you back to the to all your books. You can see the details of each of them. Um, and again, same thing. Uh, yeah, there's a small chat board that looks terrible as well. Just like uh, you create it, and then it's more like a chat thing with all the users that are logged in, basically. Um, if you click here, it shows you. Oh, well, first of all, you can. Oh, uh, what else? There is a thing that is protected. So, well, if you are logged in as a user, you cannot see someone else's books. So, this is. Uh, Another page is in cognitive mode. You log in. Uh, what? Uh, well, yeah, basically, you log in as another user. You cannot uh, delete or update someone else's books. Um, the covers are generated randomly from a set of like different uh, shapes and all that. Uh, so if you refresh this, it gives you a different cover. Um, if you delete all the books, it gives you a there are no more books thing, which is pretty simple. Uh, yeah. But yeah, uh, there are no books, add your first book, and then it shows you to the add book form. Yeah, you click here, there's a thing that shows you to my tic-tac-toe. You feel bored. Uh, yeah, pretty much. I guess that's it. Have you read Don Quixote? I, I started it many years ago, never finished it. <laughs> it's just too long. I, uh, but it's pretty interesting. Um, what was I gonna do now? Oh, code. Yeah. So, sorry, like, guys. Just so you know, I I've been wanting to pee for a long while now, and that's why I'm so stressed now. But <laughs> and that will be forever cemented on this video that will be posted on YouTube. That is awesome. <laughs> I I don't care. Um. <laughs> so yeah. Um. What do you guys want to see? Uh, controllers. Um, yeah, the book animation, of course. Yes, yeah, book CSS. animation. Come up with yeah. the book I was like, animation. What are you talking about? <laughs> this is all CSS. Uh, pretty much, there are different animations for different um, for different kinds of books. Because if you guys notice, the homepage book is a different animation than on the index or for the details. So uh, each one of them has their different um, wait IDs and all that. Oh my god! It's yeah. Crazy. <laughs> wait, uh, where did you find uh, reference for this? <laughs> well, all that is just on. I think I credited it on my uh, readme. Yes, all here. All these. This is just oh, for the animations, and then you just yeah. tweak them to what you need. What, sir? I said you totally played us. Why? Like your poker face. You're like, yeah, I'm not that good at pool. I mean, we can play one game. <laughs> no, this is, <laughs> what? No, seriously. <laughs> I didn't do much. I don't think I felt like it. Let's only bet like $500. I'm not that good, though. 1407 lines of CSS. I didn't pay Slash anyone like this time on Fiverr. <laughs> um, yeah. Slash and drop the mixtape. <laughs> Uh, what yeah, else? what is that song, by the way? That song was... Oh, that song is... Actually, sounds happy, but... Oh! Doki Doki Literature Club, uh, created by Dan Salvato, as I put on my Rhythme. Uh, this is from a video game that came out a few years ago. I don't know if any of you heard of it, but yeah. Cheerful song, uh, and the game is... Literal, uh, about a literature club, so yeah, I thought it was fitting. 
Um, so for the animation, you can adjust it so you can have the buttons on the page of oh yeah i should like, how that. did you do that that was pretty cool um so for that you basically oh this is commented out because it's for a, a stars kind of rating that i was trying to implement but it didn't work i mean it did work but it was giving you a not a number um thing on display uh this is for you can like vote instead of a drop down menu you can fill up these stars uh this is what it is along with its respective uh oh wait what did i do uh its respective css that is also commented out somewhere somewhere over there um yeah so to answer your question basically you have pages and each page is a different div that has its own animation values and CSS properties and everything. And you basically just move whatever you want to put inside the page inside that div. So it's the content is a child of that div and therefore it's inside it, if that makes any sense. Um, yeah. So I'll show you again. Oh, there are no books. So uh, let's have just a quick one. Uh, uh, so yeah, uh, yeah. Basically, this is the if if you go here, uh, you can see that each page is a different div. All right. Yeah. Uh, what else? Oh, for this content on this page, though, you have to flip it. Otherwise, it will just be backwards like if you were looking at it through a mirror so to solve that you just do this quick style transform scale minus one to one so basically just flips it and that's it yeah uh, for the random covers you just give them a random value all the covers have basically different numbers assigned to them uh, and it gets assigned randomly um yeah pretty this much is, this is fantastic yeah, like amazing excellent excellent work this is uh, thanks this is great yeah this is so cool <laughs> the only bootstrap i use what what nick well even like in terms of your your you know your functionality because your css is stupid but <laughs> the the you know being able to route everything with it is just so dynamic it's really cool so the yeah. back end side of things like what's happening not obviously visually it looks amazing <clears throat> but Thanks. even thinking about because we know what goes into this a user would have no a regular user would have no idea like all of the routes and everything i'm curious to like look at your routes because that's routes are pretty simple uh i'll close this thing because it's uh, at night yeah, I'll put this full screen. So routes are pretty just a standard, I guess. Um, new create index, like, like basic seven we have been using. Um, yeah, pretty much. And um, it's route for this stuff, but yeah, I don't know what questions you have about the routes that I may be able to answer. No, I was just looking at like how, you, just trying to figure out how you were rendering and redirecting to all of these different things. Oh, controllers then? Yeah. Kind of. So yeah, again, this is all pretty standard. I got, um, I referenced it from Game Goose, Movies, and Flights, and I just made a Frankenstein of my uh, controllers using pieces of each of the previous works and putting it all together, kind of. Um, the trick, the trick was well i saw this during the weekend because uh i believe yesterday no i believe it was yesterday or somewhere where um you guys were having a like a help chat thing uh and zoom and ben was like oh a user should not be able to 
modify other users' content. So I was like, oh, I don't have that. So I, yeah, that was, I struggled, I struggled with that for a while, um, but I solved it by 2 a.m. Uh, yeah, basically the IDs of all the thing, the user, stuff like that, and it worked, pushed it, and just kept working on styling, basically. Uh, for the index page, for the books, it's just a for each that repeats all the divs for the book uh, over and over. If they're in the books, shows you Dewey eating a burger and saying that there are no books. Uh, yeah. I don't know what else. What else do you guys want to see? Anybody else well have any questions? Very, very well done. Thanks. I have a round of applause may, for some May I go pee? <laughs> yeah, you can. Let's, go. Let's all go do that. Let's be back in six minutes. <laughs> Only because you did such a good job. <laughs> <laughs> if it had been bad. <laughs> <laughs> ben, David, I did get and Shazad, I did get the maps to render. I I had oh, to make cool. new files, but I got it working. Cool. We probably have a couple moments. We could see that after we get back from the break. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
Okay. That feels so much better now. 